Okay, let's open with the... That seems to be a Ich möchte dir danken, wo du diesen Morgen den du uns gegeben hast. And I pray that we can live out of your word in this day. Bitte hilf uns, dass wir gemäß deinem Wort an diesem Tag leben. And I pray that you will open our ears to hear what you are saying. Bitte öffne auch unsere Ohren, damit wir hören, was du uns sagen möchtest. That we can also eat of the tree of life even today. So, dass wir auch schon heute von dem Baum des Lebens essen können. And because your word is staying for eternity. Denn dein Wort ist bleibt ewiglich. And I pray that you will also bless the speaker that the word is coming from you to you. Und bitte segne auch die Sprecher, dass um, also dein Wort aus ihnen kommt. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. In Jesu Namen bitte ich. Amen. Okay, um, everybody got the notes? Hat jeder die Notizen? Yes, okay. Okay, the, this morning um, we're going to look at this uh, topic of the tarrying time. Also heute Morgen schauen wir uns das Thema der Verzögerungszeit an. Um, I don't know if some people noticed, but it was said that everybody only listens to what I say and <laughs> I'm deceiving everybody right, on this topic. Und ich weiß nicht, ob das alle mitbekommen haben, aber es wurde gesagt, dass um, sozusagen ich alle sozusagen verführe in diesem Thema. Okay, but these are just many of these false charges that are beginning to be uh, agitated right now. Aber das ist bloß eine von vielen um, Anklagen, die eben gemacht wird momentan. Oh, okay, so anyway, let's let's begin uh, under the head and there history repeats. Also wir fangen an unter dieser Überschrift, die Geschichte wiederholt sich. Okay, it says again and again, I've been shown that the past experiences of God's people are not to be counted as dead facts. We are not to treat the record of these experiences as we would treat a last year's almanac. The record is to be kept in mind, for history will repeat itself. What will repeat? History, right? Now we understand that God is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, right? Wir verstehen ja, Gott ist das Alpha und Omega und der Anfang und das Ende. And he demonstrates everything to come at the end of the world by all the past histories, right? Und er demonstriert alles am Ende der Welt durch die vergangenen Geschichten. The Bible is one big history book, right? Also die Bibel ist ein großes Geschichtebuch. It's all point to the end of the world. Es weist alles auf das Ende der Welt hin. The darkness of the mysteries of the night is to be illuminated with the light of heaven. In the future, Satan's superstitions will assume new forms. False theories clothed with garments of light will be presented to God's people. Thus Satan will try to deceive, if possible, the very elect. Our watchword is to be to the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it's because there's no light in them. Okay? So history is going to repeat itself. Also Geschichte wird sich wiederholen. So... If you can't find it in history, what is it? Wenn du etwas nicht in der Geschichte finden kannst, was ist es dann? Yeah, it's false. What did you say, Mark? There's nothing new under the sun. Yeah, it's it, there's nothing new under the sun, right? Okay. Also es wäre etwas Falsches. Okay. So go to the um, next paragraph. Wir gehen zum nächsten Paragraph. It says, in history and prophecy, the Word of God portrays the long-continued conflict between truth and error. So what's the conflict about? Also worum geht dieser Konflikt? Truth and error, right? Über Wahrheit und Irrtum. That conflict is yet in progress. Those things which have been will be repeated. 
that's taken from Ecclesiastes, right? Also das wird jetzt aus Prediger entnommen. Right? Because there's no new thing under the sun. That's th those those things which have been will be repeated as Ecclesiastes 3, uh, say 1 verse 10, I think. Also right? diese Dinge, die gewesen sind und sich wiederholen, das ist Prediger 1 Vers 10. Okay, old controversies will be revived and new theories will be continually arising. But God's people who in their belief and fulfillment of prophecy have acted a part in the proclamation of the first, second and third angel's messages know where they stand. They have an experience that is more precious than fine gold. They are to stand firm as a rock holding the beginning of their confidence steadfast unto the end. Right? And that line there is taken from Hebrews chapter 10, which we will read later. Right? Und dieser Satz wurde entnommen von Hebräer 10. Okay. And so, which history here is she referring to? Also, auf welche Geschichte bezieht sich hier Schwester Weid? The Millerite history. The, the Millerite history, from 1798 down to 1844, right? Auf die Millergeschichte von 1798 bis 1844. That history is the standard. To stand on that history, it's firm as a rock, right? Also, auf dieser Geschichte sollen wir sozusagen stehen, so fest wie ein Felsen. Okay, um, next quote from Desire of Ages. Nächstes Zitat von Leben Jesu. There are not many ways to heaven. Each one may not choose his own way. Christ says, I am the way. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Since the first gospel sermon was preached, when in Eden it was declared that the seed of the woman should bruise the serpent's head, Christ had been uplifted as the way, the truth, and the life. He was the way when Adam lived. When Abel presented to God the blood of the slain lamb, uh, representing the blood of the Redeemer, Christ was the way by which patriarchs and prophets were saved. He is the way by which alone we can have access to God. So, the first gospel message was preached where? In the beginning, right? And it's the same gospel message at the end, right? That the only way to be saved is by the, the Lamb slain since the foundation of the world, right? Okay, so it's the only way. So go now to uh, Genesis 15. We can get to 1 Mose 15. Because we just read in Desire of Ages, right, that the first gospel message was preached in Eden and it was the promise was given, right? Then we have ja eben gelesen, dass diese erste Evangeliumspredigt Eden verkündigt wurde und das war diese Verheißung, die gegeben wurde. Right, so the, the promise that was given in Eden is the same promise that's been given all the way down through time, right? Okay, let's look. Go to Genesis 15. Because, just sorry, I just want to make a point. It says, that when the, it says there, when the first sermon was preached in Eden, it was declared that the seed of the woman should bruise the serpent's head. Who's the seed that's prophesied there in Eden? Also, wer ist dieser Same, von dem hier prophezeit wurde in Eden? Christ. Okay, is Margaret correct, what she's saying? Okay, if we are understanding the Bible, all the Bible is pointing about the end of the world, right? Is Margaret correct what she said? Um, also, is Margaret correct what she said? When we understand that everything in the Bible speaks about the end of the world. It's talking about God's people. It's talking about God's people, right? 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 It's talking is those that are going to be born again at the end of the world that are like Christ. 
von dieser Frau, das spricht von denen, die am Ende der Welt dann wiedergeboren werden. That's the promise, right? Das ist die Verheißung. Right? Christ had to come in order to fulfill the type. He had to be the, he had to be the example for his people at the end of the world, right? Also Christus musste kommen, um diesen Typus zu erfüllen. Er musste zu diesem Beispiel werden für die Menschen am Ende der Welt. Uh, uh, look, uh, I'm, I'm looking around. This face is looking perplexed here. Is there anybody in any doubt of what this, what I'm saying? Hat right? irgendjemand Zweifel über das? Okay, then let's look a bit more confident in what we are looking at here, because it's very important, right? Because we have to stand on this and not turn around and say, well, Brother Mark said this, right? No, Brother Mark didn't say anything. Brother Mark is reading straight out the Bible, right? Und um, wir müssen uns eben sehr sicher sein, sind die nicht, um, um, die sind sehr wichtig und wir können dann nicht sagen, okay, Brother Mark hat das gesagt, sondern wir müssen die Bibel zitieren. Okay, so it's talking about the seed of the woman there. So It's, and that was given in the book of Genesis, which is the first book in the Bible, right? And that seed is found in the last book of the Bible, right? Right, just go to um, Revelation chapter 12. Verse 1. It says, There appeared another great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she, being with child, cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. This is this woman that's spoken about in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15, 16, right? Also das ist diese Frau, von der gesprochen wird in 1. Mose 3, Vers 15 und 16. Right? And the book of Revelation is speaking about the end of the world. Right? Und das Buch der Offenbarung spricht vom Ende der Welt. Right? Anybody got any difficulties with it? Okay. Verse 17, it also says, it's the remnant of the seed. Okay, yeah, it says, and the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. And we'll talk about her seed in a moment, right? Und in Vers 17 sagt es auch, spricht es von diesen übrigen, von ihren Samen. Wir werden dazu so he's going to bruise her heel, right? Also er wird ihre Ferse verletzen. But the promise is that the seed of the woman is going to bruise his head, right? I, I will not get frustrated about that. I'll go forward to Genesis 15. You know, when these truths really take hold of your heart, you will sit there with great beams of joy on your face, right? So, Genesis 15 and verse 2. It says, And Abraham said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless? And the steward of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus. And Abraham said, Behold, to me thou hast given no what? Seed. Seed, right? And lo, one born in my house is mine heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, But he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now towards heaven, and tell the stars, if thou be able to number them. And he said unto them, So shall thy seed be. So how many is his seed? Also wie viele sind sein Samen? You can't count them for the stars, right? Du kannst sie nicht zählen für die Sterne. And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it. To him for righteousness. So, what did Abraham believe? Also, was hat Abraham geglaubt? The promise. The promise, right? Die Verheißung. Okay. And because he believed the promise, this is what made Abraham righteous, right? 
Weil er diese Verheißung geglaubt hat, das hat ihn gerecht gemacht. That God was able to do what he promised to do, right? Dass Gott in der Lage ist, das zu tun, was er verheißt. Sorry? Was not only able, he would do it. He, he, yes, that, that, that he would do it, right? That he, he, Abraham basically didn't doubt the promise, right? Und dass er nicht nur in der Lage ist, sondern dass er es auch tun wird. Und Abraham hat daran nicht gezweifelt. Okay, verse 7. And he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee out of the Ur of the Chaldees to give thee this land to inherit it. Okay, so Abraham had to come out of where? Also Abraham musste von wo herauskommen? He had to come out of Babylon, right? And he came into the land that was promised to him, right? Und er kam in das Land, was ihm verheißen war. Did he get that promise? Hat er diese Verheißung bekommen? I mean, he was in the land, but he was not the, the, he was surrounded by heathen, and he had to live in amongst them, but yet he believed that this land, at some point, would be his, right? Also er war in, schon in diesem Land, aber er war eben sozusagen rundherum, also umgeben, okay. umgeben von Heiden, und ihm war eben verheißen, dass er das Land dann bekommen würde, dass es sein sein wird. But in order to get come into that land, what did the Lord first have to do? Aber damit er in dieses Land kommt, was musste der Herr zuerst tun? He had to come out of Babylon, right? Er musste aus Babylon herauskommen. Okay. Is there any new thing at the end of the world? Gibt es etwas Neues unter der Sonne am Ende der Welt? No, right? Nein. Okay. So, when you go to the next uh, quote from third selected messages. <coughs> As God called the children of Israel out of Egypt that they might keep his Sabbath, so he calls his people out of Babylon that they may not worship the beast nor his image. Right? So Abraham coming out of Babylon is a parallel to two other events, right? Also Abraham, der aus Babylon herauskommt, ist eine Parallele zu zwei weiteren Ereignissen. It's a parallel to coming out of Egypt. Also es ist parallel zu dem, dass man aus. And also coming out of this spiritual Babylon at the end of the world, which is the Sunday law, right? Und auch aus diesem geistlichen Babylon herauskommen, was am Ende der Welt ist, das Sonntagsgesetz. Okay, next quote from Patriarchs and Prophets. Gehen zum nächsten Zitat von Patriarchen und Propheten. It says through type. And promise through what? Sorry. The quote. We have it just in English, not in Okay, maybe I just made a mistake there. Right now. You want to just translate it? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay, sorry, I, I put this quote in English. He's going to put it at the end there in German, so we'll just go to the quote that Lawrence posts. Also, das jetzige Zitat wird jetzt ganz am Ende sein, das was Lawrence eingestellt hat. Patriarchen und Propheten 154. It says, through type and promise, preached before the gospel unto Abraham. Um, and it refers you to Galatians chapter 3. It says, And the patriarch's faith was fixed upon the Redeemer to come. So, the promise given to Abraham was pointed forward to the Redeemer, right? Which is, which is Christ, right? But we've just read, the promise given to Abraham says that this promise would be as the stars of heaven for multitude. You couldn't count them, right? Und wir haben ja gelesen, dass diese Verheißung so zahlreich wie die Sterne sein sollte. Also man kann sie kaum zählen. So Christ is just typifying that promise, right? Also Christus typifiziert diese Verheißung. Okay. It says, 
And if Petria's faith was fixed upon the Redeemer to come, said Christ to the Jews, Your father Abraham rejoiced that he should see my day, and he saw it and was glad. So where did Abraham see that day? As of had Abraham given. Let's read. It says, The ram offered in the place of Isaac represented the Son of God who was to be sacrificed in our stead. When man was doomed to death by transgression of the law of God, the father, looking upon his son, said to the sinner, Live, I have found a ransom. Right? Okay, so in one sense, the ransom that was being given for Isaac was pointing forward to Christ on the cross. Yes. Right? Also einerseits dieses Lösegeld sozusagen, ja, das, was gegeben wurde, hat hingewiesen auf Christus. But in, but in another sense, Isaac was also typifying Christ to be slain, right? Okay, and the ram offered up in place of Isaac was the wicked that were going to receive the sins back upon them for persecuting God's people, right? Okay, next paragraph. It was to impress Abraham's mind with the reality of the gospel as well as to test his faith that God commanded him to slay his son. The agony which he endured during the dark days of that fearful trial was permitted that he might understand from his own experience, something of the greatness of the sacrifice made by the infinite God for man's redemption. No other test could have caused Abraham such torture or soul, as did the offering of his son. God gave his son to a death of agony and shame. The angels who witnessed the humiliation and soul anguish of the Son of God were not permitted to interpose, as is the case of Isaac. There was no voice to cry, it is enough. So you see, Isaac was was the fulfillment of the promise, right, to I, to Abraham. Also Isaac war diese Erfüllung der Verheißung für Abraham. In type. In typos. Right. <coughs> Just as the lamb that replaced is Abraham was a type, pointing always forward to something in the future, right? Also so wie diese Witter eben. Isaac ersetzt hat, das weist eben alles auf die Zukunft hin. Okay, so, um, go to Galatians chapter 3. Wir gehen jetzt zu Galater 3. Vers 16. Und Vers 16. <coughs> It says, now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. And his seed was Isaac, right? Und sein Same war ja Isaac. Okay. He saith not unto seeds as of many, but as of one, unto thy seed, which is Christ. So is that a contradiction? <coughs> well, it's a, it's a contradiction <coughs> that the, the seed would be as the stars of heaven for multitude, right? Also, es ist ein Widerspruch zu dem, dass der Same eben wie die Sterne am Himmel sein wird für all die Herrscher. But when you understand that Christ is just typifying his people at the end of the world, then it's no contradiction, right? Aber wenn wir verstehen, dass Christus ja sein Volk am Ende der Welt typifiziert, dann ist es wieder kein Widerspruch. Okay, next quote from Desire of Ages. Nächstes Zitat von dem Jesus. And it also illustrates that if you are Christ, you are even seated. Uh, we, we, we will come to that, right? So, n n n next uh, paragraph. Uh, next uh, quote, please. It says, The Savior's coming was foretold in Eden. So what was foretold in Eden? Also, was war bereits vorher gesagt in Eden? The, the seed that's going to be as the stars for multitude, right? Und der Same, der die Sterne sein wird. When Adam and Eve first heard the promise, they looked for its speedy fulfillment. They joyfully welcomed their firstborn son. That's what Abraham did. He rejoiced in Isaac, his firstborn son, right? Und das ist auch, was Abraham gemacht hat. Er hat sich auf Freude an Isaac, seinem erstgeborenen Sohn hoping that he might be the deliverer. But the fulfillment of the promise tarried. What did it do? 
Also was hat die Verheißung getan? It tarried, right? Sie hat sich verzögert. Did it tarry for Abraham also? Um, hat sie sich yes. verzögert für Abraham? It's always tarrying. Ever since Eden, the promise is tarrying right down to the end of the world, right? Das ist immer so. Schon seit Eden zögert sich immer diese Verheißung bis zum Ende der Welt. Those who first received it died without the sight. From the days of Enoch, the promise was repeated through patriarchs and prophets, keeping alive the hope of his appearing, and yet he came not. The prophecy of Daniel revealed the time of his advent, but not all rightly interpreted the message. Century after century passed away, the voices of the prophets ceased. The hand of the oppressor was heavy upon Israel, and many were ready to exclaim, The days are prolonged, and every vision faileth. That's Ezekiel 12, right? Also, das ist Ezekiel 12. Where else did God's people use or refer to uh, this prophecy? Und wo noch hat sich Gottes Volk auf diese Verheißung bezogen? Not in 1844. Well, yes, in the spring of, in, in the first disappointment, in Millerite history. In der ersten Enttäuschung von der Millergeschichte. Okay, they said that this prophecy gave them much comfort, right? Haben Sie gesagt, dass diese Weissagung ihnen viel Trost gegeben hat? Okay, now let's just keep that thought in mind. Wir sollten dran denken. So, um, so we read in the quote here that the prophecy of Daniel revealed the time of his advent. This is the 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 type, right? Also, we have gelesen die Prophezeiung. Daniel, sie hat eben sozusagen hingewiesen auf die Wiederkunft. This is the type. Das ist eben der Typus. Okay. Go to Daniel 9 and verse 25. Und wir gehen jetzt zu Daniel 9 und Vers 25. It says, Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the Prince, shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. The street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times. So, it takes you to the 69th week, right? The end of the 69th week. Also, das bringt dich zum Ende der 69. Woche. Which was his baptism, right? Was er seine Taufe war. Okay, next quote. Nächstes Zitat. It says, but like the stars in the vast circuit of their appointed path, God's purposes know no haste and no delay. Through the symbols of the great darkness and the smoking furnace, God had revealed to Abraham the bondage of Israel in Egypt. Who did he reveal that to? Also wem hat er das offenbart? Abraham. And Abraham, to fulfill the type of the promise had to come out of Babylon, right? Und Abraham, damit er diesen Typus der Verheißung erfüllt, musste aus Babylon herauskommen. Right, we read the coming out of Babylon is the coming out of Egypt, right? Wir haben ja gelesen, das herauskommen aus Babylon ist auch das herauskommen aus Ägypten. So, hence, he told Abraham that his seed, or the seed that's promised to him, would be in bondage in Egypt for 400 years, right? Und er hat Abraham gesagt, dass sein Same, der ihm verheißen war, in Gefangenschaft in Ägypten sein sollte für 400 Jahre. Right? See how he's bringing all these types together, right? Also wir können sehen, es bringt all diese Typen zusammen. Okay, God had revealed to Abraham the bondage of Israel in Egypt and had declared that the time of their sojourning should be 400 years. So what have they got to do in order for the promise to be fulfilled? Also was mussten sie tun, damit diese Verheißung erfüllt werden konnte? They got to tarry till the appointed time, right? Sie mussten warten bis zur bestimmten Zeit. Okay. Christ, the, the end of the 69th week, was at the appointed time. Und das Ende der 69. Woche war das eine bestimmte Zeit. Yes. It tells us that in Galatians 4, right? Ja, es sagt uns das in Galater 4. So, basically, the paralleling the children, many, the, the seeds that are the stars of heaven coming out of Egypt with the baptism of Christ, right? 
Also es ist parallel gesetzt, dieser Same, also diese vielen, diese Sterne, die aus Ägypten herauskommen, mit der Taufe Christi. And it's paralleled with Abraham coming out of Egypt into the land, right? Und es ist auch parallel mit Abraham, der um, herauskommt aus Babylon und in das Land geht. Right? All types, right? Also es sind alles Typen. Okay. It says, after what he said, they shall come out with great substance. And Lawrence covered this topic last night, right? Und dann sagt dann, sie werden mit viel Haare eben herauskommen. Und das haben wir uns ja gestern Abend schon angeschaut. Against that word, all the power of Pharaoh's proud empire battled in vain. On the self same day, appointed in the divine promise. So, what, what was part of the divine promise? Also, was war Teil dieser göttlichen Verheißung? An appointed time, right? Eine bestimmte Zeit. It came to pass that all the hosts of the Lord went out from the land of Egypt. So in heaven's council the hour for the coming of Christ had been determined. When the great clock of time pointed to that hour, Jesus was born in Bethlehem. So what's it also paralleling? The birth, right? Which is a sign, right? Christ coming out, Christ being resurrected was what? Christus, der auferstanden ist, hat was Or should say, Christ preaching was what? Oder Christus, der gepredigt hat, was hat er da gesagt? It was a sign, right? Es war auch ein Zeichen. Sign of Jonah, right? Es war das Zeichen von Jonah. And he parallels it to him coming out of the grave also, right? Und es ist auch parallel mit dem, dass er aus dem Grab kam. Because when Christ came out of the grave, what happened? Denn als Christus aus dem Grab kam, was geschah da? The, the first fruits were resurrected and they began to preach in the power of the Spirit, right? Die Erstlingsfrüchte wurden auferweckt und sie begannen zu predigen in der Kraft des Geistes. All of them types pointed to the, the final event at the end of the world, right? Also alle von ihnen sind Typen, die dann schlussendlich auf das Ende der Welt hinweisen. Next paragraph. It says, when the fullness of the time was God was come, God sent forth His Son, and that's the baptism, right? So the baptism and the birth of Christ are both types that parallel God's people coming out of Egypt with great substance, right? Also die Taufe Christi und auch die Geburt von Christus. Es ist parallel mit dem, dass Gottes Volk aus Ägypten herauskommt mit viel Gut. Which Sister White parallels with the coming out of Babylon at the Sunday Law at the end of the world, right? Und was auch Schwester White parallel setzt mit Gottes Volk, was am Ende der Welt herauskommt, das Babylon. Right? Prefigured by Abraham coming out of Babylon. Was um, vorausgeschattet wurde durch Abraham, der auch aus Babylon herauskam. Right? Everybody see that? Kann das jeder sehen? So let's read on. It says... Providence had directed the movements of nations and the tide of human impulse and influence until the world was ripe for the coming of the Deliverer. The nations were united under one government. One language was widely spoken and was everywhere recognized as the language of literature. Right? It's a type, right? What do we see coming together? The whole world, right? The final kingdom is the whole world, right? Das letzte Königreich ist die ganze Welt. Okay, we're nearly there, right? They're all united together to try and destroy this so-called virus, right? This virus that they've manufactured themselves, right? Und wir sind fast bereits eben schon da in der Geschichte. Also sie kommen bereits alle zusammen, um eben gemeinsam dieses selbstgemachte Virus zu zerstören. Okay, go to Hosea chapter 11, verse 1. Wir gehen jetzt zu Hosea 11, Vers 1. Christ had to fulfill the scriptures, right? Denn Christus musste ja die Schriften erfüllen. In Hosea 11, verse 1, it says, When Israel was a child, when Israel was a what? Also als Israel was war? A child, right? Ein Kind. According to Galatians 4, when are you a child? 
When you are in captivity, right? When Israel was a child, then I loved him and called my son out of Egypt. And he came out with great substance. It was the birth, right? So go to Matthew chapter 2. Verse 13. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeareth to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, and take thy young child and his mother, and flee into Egypt, and be thou there until I bring thee word, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. And when he arose, he took the young child as his mother and his mother by night, and departed into Egypt. And they were there until the death of Herod that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt I have called my son. So Christ coming out of Egypt is a parallel to all the seed of Abraham coming out of Egypt according to the promise. Right? Also Christus, der aus Ägypten kam, das ist eine Parallele um, für all den Samen Abrahams, der auch herauskommt. Right? Richtig. So when you go back to Genesis 3.15, the promise of the seed, what's it speaking about? It's speaking about God's people coming out of Babylon that they don't receive the mark of the beast, right? Are we in a type of the mark of the beast right now? Sind wir momentan in einem Typus des Mahlzeichen des Tieres? Yes, all the characteristics, all the DNA of that persecution is right here in our time, right? Ja, also all diese Eigenschaften, diese DNA sozusagen der um, Verfolgung finden wir eben jetzt in dieser Geschichte. So, go to Luke 24, verse 44. Wir gehen jetzt zu Lukas 24, Vers 44. It says, and he said unto them, These are the words which I speak unto you while I was yet with you, that all things might be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. So Christ is speaking to these two disciples, right? Also spricht hier zu diesen zwei Jüngern. And he's pointing all the prophet, all the types to himself, right? Und, um er bezieht sozusagen all diese Typen auf sich selbst. But he is also a type. Who do all those promises point to? Aber wenn er selber auch ein Typus ist, auf wen weisen dann all diese Verheißungen hin? The seed that are the stars of heaven that are going to come out of Babylon and so they don't receive the mark of the beast, right? Auf den Samen, der auch die Sterne sind, die was aus Babylon herauskommen, die Okay, then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures and said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and rise from the dead the third day. Okay, and these are all symbols for this resurrection right here, right? And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. So Christ is now, he's taken them to the scriptures, right? Also Christus bringt sie zu diesen Schriften. Showing how his life how he had to go in Egypt and come out of Egypt to fulfill and parallel God's people in Egypt, coming out of Egypt, right? Und er zeigt ihnen sein Leben, also wie er nach Ägypten gehen musste, wie er herauskommen musste, was eben parallel ist mit Gottes Volk. Right? And how he, he as a child, had to tarry till the time appointed, right? Und wie auch er als Kind warten musste, bis auf die bestimmte Zeit. And now what's he telling them to do? Und was sagt er ihnen jetzt, was um, sie tun sollten? Tarry till the time appointed, right? Sie sollten auch warten bis zur bestimmten Zeit. So just like I tarried and I got filled with the Holy Spirit, so now you have to do the same, right? Also er sagt ihnen, so wie ich eben warten musste, 
diese Erfüllung der Verheißung, so müsst ihr nun dasselbe tun. Because it's the promise, right? It's the same promise. Denn es ist die Verheißung, es ist dieselbe Verheißung. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. Okay, now go to Acts chapter 1 and verse 4. Und jetzt gehen wir zur Geschichte 1, Vers 4. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. John was the type, right? Also Johannes war der Typus. Pointing forward to... The, the perfect fulfillment of it, right? Der Vorgewiesen hat auch diese perfekte Erfüllung davon. Okay. So, but we know that in, in, a, in one sense, John's the first birth, but it's really pointing down to this second birth. Because when you come out of Babylon, it's the image of the beast test, it's where your sins are blotted out, right? Und wir wissen ja, Johannes ist die erste Geburt, aber es war auch auf die zweite Geburt hin. Denn um, wenn du aus Babylon herauskommst, When you come Babylon. Your sins are blotted out. That's where, that's where the promise is perfectly fulfilled. Right? right? Okay. So, um, Acts chapter 2, verse 15. And this is now Pentecost. This is the promise, right? And das spricht jetzt von Pfingsten, also das ist die Verheißung. And it says, For these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. So what was the prophet Joel speaking about? Also von was hat der Prophet Joel gesprochen? He was pointing forward to the promise, right? Er hat vorgewiesen auf diese Verheißung. And it shall come to pass... In the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see vision, and your old men shall dream dreams. Right? So, Sister White says it was only partially fulfilled at Pentecost. Okay. And she talks about it. it talks about Millerite history. And how Millerite history on August 11, 1840 typified the great event when Joel would be fulfilled, right? Sie spricht dann von der Miller-Geschichte und vom 11. August 1840 und wie diese Ereignisse eben um, hinweisen darauf, wie dann Joel eben perfekt erfüllt wird. Right? Because, just go to Acts 3 in verse 19. Because we just read here that when the Lord pours out His Spirit, what's going to happen? It says, Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. What's that a fulfillment of? It's the revelation. Daniel 1 and verse 17, right? Daniel 1 and verse 17. Yes, no? Yeah, Margaret, why are you looking confused? Uh, yes? No. Go to Daniel 1 verse 17. Also, wenn man zu Daniel 1 verse 17 geht. And then when you get there, just read it nice and loud for us, please. Right? Richtig. We've gone through these many, many times. This point is the point where they receive the revelation. Now, understanding in how many visions and dreams? Also, All. Right? Das hier ist eben diese Offenbarung, denn sie ein Verständnis an allen Visionen. Okay. That's, the that's typifying this fulfillment, right? Und das typifiziert diese Erfüllung. Okay. So, in Acts 3.19... 
which is also referring to Joel, right? It said, Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And the times of refreshing is the former and latter rain promised by Joel. So where's Acts 3.19 pointing to? Yes, but where, where is uh, we've gone through these verses? The investigative judgment, right? Where your sins are blotted out, right? See, so what I'm saying, right? Coming out of Babylon, what are you coming out of? So you don't receive the mark and his image, right? Also, damit du nicht sein Zeichen und sein Bild erhältst. What do you receive? Aber was erhältst du dann? The seal of God. Das Siegel Gottes. When do you receive the seal of God? Und wann erhältst du das? When your sins are blotted out, right? Wenn deine Sünden ausgetilgt werden. And Sister White takes that verse, which is the fulfillment of Joel, which is Pentecost. And points it to the investigative judgment, right? Of the living. Und Schwester Weid nimmt das, also diese Erfüllung von Joel und von Pfingsten und weist es eben auf das Untersuchungsgericht hin. Right? Am Ende der Welt. Okay. So, go now to Matthew chapter 3, verse 11. Wir gehen jetzt zu Matthäus 3 und Vers 11. This is John's own words, right? I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Two baptisms, right? Okay, now go to Matthew chapter 20, verse 22. Wir gehen jetzt zu Matthäus 20 und Vers 22. But Jesus answered and said, Ye know not what ye ask. Are you able to drink of the cup that I shall drink of and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They say unto him, We are able. And he saith unto them, Ye shall, indeed, ye shall drink indeed of my cup and be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with. So what's the baptism that John was pointing forward to? Also was ist diese Taufe, auf die Johannes gewesen hat? The cross, right? Das Kreuz. But he says that he's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. What event was that? Und das hat er gesagt, dass er taufen wird mit dem Heiligen Geist und mit Feuer. Und welches Ereignis war das? Pentecost, right? Es war Pfingsten. So Christ is tying together the cross with Pentecost, right? Also Christus verbindet dieses Kreuz mit Pfingsten. Okay. So just go to Romans chapter 6. Und wir gehen jetzt zu Römer 6. The, the Bible, all these stories, they're all little allegories, all pointing us to this one event at the end of the world, right? Also die ganze Bibel, also die all diese so kleinen Gleichnisse, sie weisen alle auf das Ende der Welt hin. In Romans 6, it says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? So this is the baptism that Christ has said ye shall be baptized with, right? Also, das ist diese Taufe, von der Christus gesagt hat, dass wir getauft werden sollen. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should also walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. So it's paralleling the baptism of the Spirit with the baptism of his death, right? Also es vergleicht diese Taufe mit dem Geist, mit dieser Taufe des Todes. Because when you go to Galatians chapter 4, the baptism that they're referring to here is a parallel to when 
Christ was baptized, right? Denn wenn wir zu Galater 4 gehen, da, um, sorry. It says, when you go to Galatians 4, the baptism that they're speaking about here is the baptism that Christ received when he began his ministry. The baptism of the Spirit. Galater 4, um, vergleicht es sozusagen diese Taufe, von der es eben hier spricht, um, mit der Taufe Christi, als er den Geist erhalten hat. Right, so, Christ's baptism, the cross, and Pentecost, they are all prophetically the same event, right? They're all the promise. Also Christi Taufe des Kreuz und Pfingsten, um, das spricht sozusagen alles von dieser selben Verheißung. Did you say promise? They're all the same promise. Yeah. Okay. So, <coughs> Daniel predicted the baptism, right? Und Daniel hat ja die Taufe vorher gesagt. But he says, wait for the promise of my father, speaking about Pentecost. Yet Genesis 3.15 points to the cross. They're all the promise, they're all the same event, right? Right? Hence, why we put on our line here, right, when you come down to this, this test here, it's the baptism, it's the cross, it's Pentecost, they're, they're all engulfed into one promise, right? And deswegen, when we auch hier unsere Linie schauen, auf unseren letzten Test, dann haben wir eben auch diese Taufe, das Kreuz und Pfingsten, also sie sind sozusagen alle dasselbe. Okay, now go to Galatians chapter 3 and verse 26. And jetzt gehen wir zu Galater 2 and verse 26. It says, For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Right, so how do you put on Christ? Also wie legst du Christus an? It's the, when Christ puts on you the garment, right? There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ, then ye are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Amen? So if you, if you have the baptism, which is the cross, the, the Pentecost, and the water baptism, they're all typifying this event at the end of the world, right? Also, wenn du diese Taufe hast, was auch das Kreuz und Pfingsten ist und auch diese Wassertaufe, dann weißt du es eben alles auf dieses Ende der Welt hin. And you're Abraham's seed according to the promise, right? Du bist in Abrahams Same gemäß der Verheißung. Everybody follow? Kann jeder folgen? Easy to follow this, right? <coughs> Now go to Romans chapter 2. <coughs> Verses 28 and 29. Verse 28-29. For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh. What is circumcision? Baptism, right? So it's not talking about an, an outward baptism, right? But he is a Jew which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit, and not in the letter, whose praise is not of man, but of God. Right? So the, the fulfillment of the promise is when Christ fills you with his spirit. That is what every single promise in the Bible points to. Right? In the, Bible the cross, Auf das Kreuz. which is marking this people at the end of the world that will go to the cross and be baptized with the baptism that Christ was baptized with. So has the promise been fulfilled? Also wurde diese Verheißung bereits erfüllt. Only in type, right? 
Right. So what is the promise doing? Und was macht diese Verheißung? It's tarrying, right? Sie verzögert. Okay, Millerite history was a type. Die Millergeschichte war ein Typus. We are the last generation. It's going to be fulfilled in our time, right? Wir sind die letzte Generation. Es wird sich erfüllen in unserer Zeit. So go to Habakkuk chapter 2. Also wir gehen jetzt zu Habakkuk Kapitel 2. Vers 2. Und Vers 2. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for what? An appointed time. But at the end it shall speak and not lie, though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Behold his soul, which is lifted up, is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. Right? So the just shall live by faith. Also der Gerechte wird das Glauben leben. So how, according to this then, how do the just live? Also gemäß dem, wie lebt der Gerechte? By tarrying, right? Indem er wartet. And believing that the promise will not fail, right? Indem er glaubt, dass die Verheißung nicht versagen wird. So, what, what was the sins of the fathers? Und das waren diese Sünden der Väter. They didn't believe the promise and they didn't tarry, right? Also sie haben die Verheißung nicht geglaubt und sie haben nicht gewartet. Okay, next quote from Ellie Ray. Zitat. It says, Jesus and all the heavenly host looked with sympathy and love upon those who had with sweet expectation longed to see him whom their souls loved. Angels were hovering around them to sustain them in the hour of their trial. Those who had neglected to receive the heavenly message were left in darkness, and God's anger was kindled against them because they would not receive the light which he had sent them from heaven. Speaking about the Millerite message, right? And the Millerite message was based upon Habakkuk, right? The Millerite message. Right? And Habakkuk said, or they believed that the fulfillment of Habakkuk was when they wrote those messages upon tables, yeah. right? Und das war ja, als sie diese um, Botschaften eben auf diese Tafel schrieben. Okay, and at the appointed time, according to Daniel chapter 12, the 1335. Und zur bestimmten Zeit, gemäß um, Daniel 12, Vers 45. The, the 1335. Also, okay. It pointed to the resurrection. Right? Right? So October 22nd was a type of the resurrection. Right? Where the Millerites called out of Babylon. Yes. yes. But they failed to understand that the fulfillment of that point right there was only pointing forward to the investigative judgment at the end of the world, right? Und sie haben eben nicht verstanden, dass dieser Punkt eben vorwärts weist auf diese Erfüllung um, des Untersuchungsgerichtes am Ende der Welt. But the, but the message was from heaven, right? Aber die Botschaft war vom Himmel. Okay, let, let's read on. Those faithful, disappointed ones who could not understand why the Lord did not come were not left in darkness. Again, they were led to their Bibles to search the prophetic periods. The hand of the Lord was removed from the figures and the mistake was explained. They saw that the prophetic periods reached to 1844 and that the same evidence which they had presented to show that the prophetic periods closed in 1843 proved that they would terminate in 1844. Light from the word of God shone upon their position and they discovered a tarrying time. Though it, the vision tarry, wait for it. In their love for Christ's immediate coming, they had overlooked the tarrying of the vision, which was calculated to manifest the true waiting ones. The what? It's designed to manifest those who believe the tarrying time and those who disbelieve it, right? Also, it's dazu gemacht, eben zu manifestieren. 
wer eben sozusagen wartet in diese Verzögerungszeiten, wer dem nicht glaubt. Um, again, they had pointed, again, they had a point of time, yet I saw that many of them could not rise above their severe disappointment to possess that degree of zeal and energy which had marked their faith. Satan and his angels triumphed over them, and those who would not receive the message congratulated themselves upon their far-seeing judgment and wisdom in not receiving the delusion, as they called it. They did not realize that they were rejecting the counsel of God against themselves and were working in union with Satan and his angels. Okay? So, the tarian that they were waiting for was, the, was typifying the second birth, right? Also, dass sie gewartet haben, diese Verzögerungszeit hat eben that they tarried typified it. The tarrying time that they are that they are waiting for is typifying the second part. Also diese Verzögerungszeit, auf die sie gewartet haben, das typifiziert die zweite Geburt. Right? Because August 11, 1840 was their first part, right? Then, the um, 11. August 1840 was their first part. Right? And Miller being raised up prior to that was the raising up of John. Und right? Miller, der ja zuvor aufgerichtet wurde, war dieses Aufrichten von Johannes. Okay. Because your sins are blotted out in the investigative judgment of the living, which takes place at the end, right? Deine Sünden, die ja ausgetilgt werden, das findet ja statt in diesem Untersuchungsgericht an dem Lebenden. Und das findet am Ende der Stadt. But it's prefigured, right? At the first birth, right? Because we've looked at this, it's the um, seal of promise. promise, right? It's an earnest of what's going to come if you tarry until the end, right? Okay. But Sister White parallels August 11, 1840 with this perfect fulfillment, right? And Sister White um, sets in parallel the 11 August 1840 with this verheißung. Because she's showing us, right, that the first birth, right, and the second birth, the, 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 the same event, but one is just a... one is just a down payment, the other one is the perfect fulfillment, right? Denn sie zeigt uns, dass die, erste, die zweite Geburt dasselbe Ereignis ist. Aber das eine ist sozusagen ähm, Anzahlung. diese Anzahlung und das zweite ist dann diese perfekte Erfüllung. But in order to preach the message, what must you receive? Aber um diese Botschaft zu predigen, was musst du da erhalten? The Holy Spirit, like Christ, right? Also den Heiligen Geist, so wie auch bei Christus. So the baptism of Christ, which is typifying this, you receive the Holy Spirit and then you preach until the cross, October 22nd, right? Also diese Taufe Christus typifiziert das, wo du diesen Heiligen Geist erhältst und dann predigst bis zum Kreuz am October 22nd, 22. Oktober, which we will read, right? Was wir auch gleich lesen werden. Okay, so, next quote. Nächstes Zitat. Many look with horror at the course of the Jews and reject and crucify Christ. And as they read the history of his shameful abuse, they think they love him, and would not have denied him as did Peter, or crucified him as did the Jews. But God, who reads the heart of all, has brought to the test that love for Jesus which they profess to feel. All heaven watched with the deepest interest the reception of the first angel's message, but many who profess to love Jesus and who shed tears as they read the story of the cross derided the good news of his coming. Instead of receiving the message with gladness, they declared it to be a delusion. They hated those who loved his appearing and shut them out of the churches. Those who rejected the first message could not be benefited by the second, neither were they benefited by the midnight cry, which was to prepare them to enter with Jesus by faith into the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary. And by rejecting the two former messages, they have so darkened their understanding that they can see no light in the third angel's message, which shows the way into the most holy place. I saw that as the Jews crucified Jesus, so the nominal churches had crucified these messages. So, October 22nd, was it the time appointed? 
26. Oktober war das eine bestimmte Zeit. Yes, and it's parallel in the cross, right? Which is the promise. Which knows no haste and no delay, right? The same sin is lurking in our hearts, brothers and sisters, right? This is what the whole Bible shown to the God's people do not believe the promise, right? They don't follow the pattern, they get itchy feet, and they think that they need to be doing something to save themselves, right? Okay, it says, Therefore they have no knowledge of the way into the most holy, and they cannot be benefited by the intercession of Jesus there. So if you reject the message, you can't enter into the investigated judgment of the living and be benefited by Christ blotting out your sin. Right? Also, wenn du diese Botschaft verwirfst, kannst du eben nicht eingehen in dieses Untersuchungsgericht, in den Lebendigen, und Christus kann dann deine Sünden nicht austreten. Like the Jews who offered their useless sacrifices, they offer up their useless prayers to the apartment which Jesus has left, and Satan, pleased with the deception, assumes a religious character and leads the minds of these professed Christians to himself. Working with his power, his signs and lying wonders to fasten them in his snare. So when you reject the truth, Satan is now going to give you power to deceive, right? Also wenn du die Botschaft verwirrst, dann kann er eben Satan die Kraft geben zu verführen. Some he deceives in one way and some in another. He has different delusions prepared to affect different minds. Some look with horror upon one deception while they readily receive another. Satan deceives some with spiritualism. He also comes as an angel of light and spreads his influence over the land by means of false reformations. When does the false reformation come? Just before the truth, right? The churches are elated and consider that God is working marvelously for them when it is the work of another spirit. The excitement will die away and leave the world and the church in a worse condition than before. Okay, so last point. So th we've dealt with the two births, right? They're both the appointed time. They're both the promise, right? Because the type or the, the, the seal of promise that you get in the beginning, you need that to be able to preach, right? So you have to go to the cross at the beginning and receive the Spirit and maintain it all the way to the end until he completes the work in you, right? Like Christ, from the baptism to the cross, right? Like the Millerites from August 11, 1840 to October 22nd, right? And in both those histories, John was raised up prior to that point, right? So, what is the first thing that needs to happen? John needs to be raised up, right? Does John also come out of the belly and filled with the Spirit? Is God's dealing with man ever the same? Right. Because it says Malachi 3 and verse 1. Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant whom ye delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. And in chapter 4 and verse 5. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. 
this has to be fulfilled before there can be anybody claiming, not that they would do that, but before the fulfillment, the perfect fulfillment of the promise, this has to be fulfilled, right? So, first. Hebrews 10 and verse 35. It says, Cast not away therefore your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward, for ye have need of patience. What is the patience? Was ist diese Geduld? It's the patience of the saints. Right? Die Geduld der Heiligen. right? This is what you need. You need to have the patience of the saints. Trusting, waiting, and believing in God, right? For ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. And according to Second Peter chapter one, how do we do the will of God? Ye exercise faith. In the promises, right? Right, because that's the only thing. You, you're not saved by your works. You're saved by exercising faith, right? But if you have a right faith, the corresponding works will be attached to that faith, right? Aber wenn du den richtigen Glauben hast, dann werden auch die Means you'll be doing the work that God has appointed in the Bible, not your own work, right? So he says, For ye have need of patience, that after you've done the will of God, you might receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by what? Faith. Taken from where? Uh, Habakkuk, right? Both the tarrying time and that expression, the just shall live by faith, is taken from Habakkuk. But if any man, sorry, if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. How do you please God? It says without faith it's impossible to please him. Right? But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. So what are we tarrying for? For John. Right? We're tarrying for John, and then we're to tarry for the first birth, and then we're to tarry for the second birth. Right? And then are we still to tarry? For Christ's second coming, right? Which it all points forward to, right? Because then he resurrects the great multitude that are as the stars of heaven, right? That's why the seventh plague is typified at the birth of the baptism, the cross, etc., etc., right? Because it's the second coming, right? Right, so the sins of the fathers is that they did not tarry. They got itchy feet and wanted to do, they wanted to try and work their own way to heaven, right? Also diese Sünde der Väter ist, dass sie eben nicht gewartet haben. Also sie haben sozusagen ähm, jubelnde Füße bekommen und just an expression, right? haben versucht, ihren eigenen Weg in den Himmel sich zu erarbeiten. Ja, yeah, just means that they, they don't really believe, that they think that, no, this can't be true, you know, we must be out there earning our salvation somehow, right? Also sie haben halt gesagt, das kann so nicht wahr sein und wir müssen irgendwie unsere Erweiterung uns selbst erarbeiten. 
But as we read these quotes many times, right, that it was only after Peter, after Job, after Isaiah, after all the prophets had received the filling of the Spirit, then is when they were to go and do that work, right? Yeah, but we have read this so often, and these quotes, that first after Joel or Isaiah, Job, Isaiah, um, here, Peter, Petrus, and after they have received the Holy Spirit, then they have also been sent to them and have the Botschaft given. Yes? Okay, so... I, and I'm not doing this for, for my benefit. I just realized that this topic has been agitated, so we need reminding of it, right? And I don't do this for my own purpose, but I have realized that this topic has been agitated, and that's why we're going to do it. Because when, when Satan comes here, what's he going to try to get you to do? Because when Satan here comes, what's he going to try to get you to do? Stop telling me. To, to doubt your past experience, to think it was all a lie, right? And, sorry? Yes, to believe that there's a different way, right? And you notice that everybody that turns, gets weedy and turns from this, they reject everything, they say it was all false, right? Yes. Okay. So if we're honest, we're not ready, right? Here has to be revived, right? This dead, the dead, dead, dry bones. Right? Okay. Let's close with prayer. And I want to ask you for us to help us to have all these thoughts in our mind. Bitte hilf uns, dass wir all diese Gedanken in unserem Verstand behalten. Take them with us during this day. Dass wir sie mit uns mitnehmen werden in diesen Tages. So to be spiritual minded. So dass wir um, geistlich gesund sein können. And have the strength to overcome temptation. Die Kraft haben können, um, Versuchungen zu überwinden. And be prepared for the future. Und vorbereitet zu sein für die Zukunft. In Jesus' name, Amen. In Jesu Namen, Amen. 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 Amen.